Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about supportive psychotherapy. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about supportive psychotherapy, indications, contraindications, techniques, principle involved in psychotherapy, and also the effectiveness of supportive psychotherapy will be discussed in this video. Supportive psychotherapy is possibly the most ubiquitously used psychotherapy across the world, but very less research is done on this psychotherapy. It is considered to be a syndrome of psychotherapies, although it is widely used across the world. It can be used as a standalone supportive psychotherapy or else it is started as a supportive psychotherapy initially, later it will be switched over to specific structured format, format of psychotherapy. That means initially you start with supportive psychotherapy based upon the patient's resources, defense mechanism, personality, coping mechanism. You may switch over to cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy or just a exposure and response prevention can be considered. That means you start with supportive psychotherapy and later switch over to a specific type of psychotherapy. This supportive psychotherapy gives you an indication the resources of the patient and then based upon the patient resources you can think of specific psychotherapy. Supportive psychotherapy is predominantly applied for treatment and intended to maintain the status quo or to prevent relapse. It focuses on the patient's coping skill with little attention giving to underlying personality or intrapsychic factors. Here the root cause will not be treated. Invariably the supportive psychotherapy focuses on managing the symptoms. That means it is used as a palliative therapy rather than a radical therapy which changes the personality of the patient. Supportive psychotherapy is mostly used as an exclusion form of therapy. That means if the patient does not suit for any type of psychotherapy, if the patient is very fragile, very very severely ill, in such a scenario supportive psychotherapy is chosen. Accordingly, it can also be understood as a kind of psychotherapy which is flexible, can fit into any kind of situation, it can address the wide range of patient requirement is supportive psychotherapy. It is like a broad spectrum antibiotic. Similarly, supportive psychotherapy is a broad spectrum psychotherapy. Let's define supportive psychotherapy. Unfortunately, there are few attempts to define supportive psychotherapy. But there is not even a single definition which clearly defines the supportive psychotherapy comprehensively. This lack of operational definition, manualized therapy, non-availability of clear-cut guidelines have resulted in few research in the area of supportive psychotherapy. Let's look into some of the definition. Divald described supportive psychotherapy as generally aimed at symptom relief and overt behavioral changes without emphasis on modifying personality or resolving unconscious conflict. Verman defined it as a substitute treatment which supplies the client with those psychological elements which are lacking or the patient is insufficiently having those resources. However, Winston and his colleagues have defined supportive psychotherapy as a didactic treatment that uses direct measures to ameliorate symptoms and maintain, restore or improve self-esteem, ego function and adaptive skill. To accomplish these objectives, treatment may involve examination of relationships, real or transferential and examination of past and current pattern of emotional response or behavior. If you look at all of these definition, it does not clearly define supportive psychotherapy. The reason being supportive psychotherapy is like a ocean. It's vast. Hence, it is very difficult to define it by a simple words. Psych supportive psychotherapy does not attempt to change a patient's personality or explore deep conflicts which are there in his unconscious mind. 
it should be considered as a form of therapy aimed to maintenance of symptoms rather than restructuring the personality. It helps the patient to cope with the symptoms, to prevent relapse of a serious psychiatric illness or to help to deal with the transient problem which the patient is going through in his life. Hence, my dear friend, supportive psychotherapy is considered as a syndrome of psychotherapies and it does not require huge training or abilities beyond common sense, interpersonal skill and capacity to empathize with the patient. However, this was the thinking which was there in the past. However, in the past few several decades, supportive psychotherapy has gradually assumed a position of greater importance, requires accreditation, need to undergo rigorous training and also license to practice psychotherapy is there in various developed countries including supportive psychotherapy. However, please remember, there is paucity of literature despite its use widely across the globe. The available literature on supportive psychotherapy, one finds no accepted de definition of supportive psychotherapy, no debate on various definitions, techniques used, little attention is given to various techniques, times, number of sessions, duration of sessions. Hence, the research is very very low with regard to supportive psychotherapy, my dear friends. Let's look into the origin of supportive psychotherapy. The simple reason is, the past dictates future. If you don't learn from the past, it will repeat. Hence, we need to understand how the supportive psychotherapy was originated. Supportive psychotherapy interventions were developed as a part of psychodynamic or psychoanalytical oriented psychotherapy. That means started during fraud. Some appear to make a distinction between psychodynamic psychotherapy versus supportive psychotherapy, implying supportive therapy is not psychodynamic. It is just supporting the patient. Other argue that supportive psychotherapy should be conceptualized as a theoretical set of techniques not derived from any schools of theories. So, there are various discussion with regard to origin of supportive psychotherapy. It is very difficult to pinpoint, yes, this is the origin. The supportive psychotherapy borrows principles from various theories and also hypotheses. Much of the literature on supportive psychotherapy relies heavily on the language of psychoanalysis in describing the characteristics of the patient and techniques used, such as improving ego functioning, minimizing the focus on transferential material, confronting maladaptive defenses. So these are the various terms used. Hence, many of the therapists believe the origin is from psychodynamic psychotherapy. Supportive psychotherapy as a treatment for those with good ego strengths who have broken down under the impact of severe environmental pressure and stress. Supportive psychotherapy is the indication. And also for those with a weak structure, especially ego structure, whose capacity for real change are minimal and who are unable to endure anxiety inevitably associated with insight therapy. That means, my dear friend, here the supportive psychotherapy is used in various conditions. Suppose if the patient is having a good resources, very poor resources, in all those situations it is used. Let's understand what is the critique of supportive psychotherapy, why it was not defined or researched very well. Supportive psychotherapy was considered to be a form of therapy which does not require any formal training and it required just a common sense. Common sense approach to the patient problem. It attributed to the good interpersonal skills between the therapist and the patient. And the therapist requires only empathizing skills. Some of the authors equated to be a, it as an eclectic psychotherapy, which uses principle from different school of thoughts. Supportive psychotherapy was historically considered to be a, a default form of therapy for patients with having lower functioning of psychic materials. That means who have poor resources. 
This argument have resulted in supportive psychotherapy being viewed as an inferior form of treatment. And many a time they are called as second class therapy for second class patients. This kind of criticism led to supportive psychotherapy not being adopted by many researchers. Hence, research in this area was very very poor. Please remember, it was considered for those patients who are very fragile, who had lower functioning of their psychic material, that is unconscious things, ego defenses were very poor. Hence, it was considered as second class therapy for second class patients. Let's look into the theory of supportive psychotherapy. There is a lack of specific clinical theory for supportive psychotherapy. It has borrowed theories from various other school of thoughts such as self-psychology, object relational theory, ego psychology and the attachment theory. Use of techniques from other school of thoughts is not contraindicated in supportive psychotherapy. It can borrow from CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, Behavioral Therapy, ERP, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy and various other school of therapies. The therapist can draw techniques from various schools of thoughts if they feel such an eclectic mix of techniques will help a patient. Hence, supportive psychotherapy is considered as an umbrella term for psychotherapy. Let's understand the continuum of supportive psychotherapy. If you look at this diagram, on one hand, the patient who has very strong resources and most impaired patient. Impaired means his psychic structures are impaired. On the other end, the patients have a least impaired ego structure. In the one end, the most impaired, where the psychic operators such as ego, defense mechanisms are very poor and very fragile with severe symptoms. That is where supportive psychotherapy is required. On the other end, where the patient is well preserved, expressive psychodynamic psychotherapy is used. But however, it does, most of the patient does not fit into a straight jacket, my dear friends. You may have to start with supportive psychotherapy initially. Once the patient builds on his skill, we may have to shift on to specific expressive form of psychotherapy. Let's understand, on either end, what are the techniques used? On the supportive, where the patient is most impaired, you need to give suggestion to the patient during therapy, education, advice, praise, reassurance, environmental manipulation and self-esteem self -esteem enhancement. That means you are doing symptomatic or palliative therapy. On the other hand, where the psychic operators are very strong, the patient is able to face the restructuring of the personality is done. There, you do confrontation, clarification, interpretation, strengthening of the ego, interpretation of transference. All those will be done to do a radical change or curative treatment so that the patient does not have relapse. Despite the difference of opinion about the theories and techniques, there is a general agreement that the main priority in supportive psychotherapy is to build holding the environment for the patient to foster therapeutic alliance. These are the two important techniques which need to be used. Let's understand what is the holding environment. It is a safe and a trusting therapeutic space that allows a patient who is emotionally fragile to deal with this effect that might potentially harm or overwhelming if you start challenging him. Hence, the holding environment or fostering environment is given so that the healing occurs. That requires a strong therapeutic alliance. The concept of support serves and wishes to play a role of parent which is inappropriately viewed by the therapist and many researcher. As a result, patient feels he is patronized, parentalized, infantilized with results that he is undermined in his self-confidence and self-esteem 
rather than supported. Hence, in supportive psychotherapy, we need to be very careful. You should not become a complete parent and infantilize the patient's problem. You need to balance this role of therapist. Let's understand the indications of supportive psychotherapy. In reality, supportive psychotherapy is practicable, is very practical, it is flexible psychotherapy that helps the patient with wide range of psychiatric illness. It is used in mood disorder, anxiety disorder, schizophrenia, stress-induced disorder, PTSD, eating disorder, OCD, BDD, substance use disorder, name the disorder. Supportive psychotherapy can be used. Since it is very flexible, can fit and address the need of range of clients with the different diagnosis, with the different comorbidities, same patient having multiple diagnosis. It is also often used as an initial form of therapy before the therapist shift into a structured, sophisticated psychotherapy. There is also evidence to support the use of supportive psychotherapy in patient with certain medical illness, including coronary artery disease, GIT, renal disease, HIV infection, cancer, it has found to be very helpful. In addition, supportive psychotherapy can be well suited for higher functioning patient also. Although I had mentioned lower functioning, low IQ patient also benefit, but it is also used in higher functioning patient. Supportive psychotherapy is generally indicated for almost all psychiatric illness except antisocial personality disorder. Don't do this, psycho, this supportive psychotherapy in psychopaths. Supportive psychotherapy is often combined with medication and other psychosocial therapies. That means it is a broad spectrum. It accepts medication. It accepts other school of thoughts and it borrows other school of thoughts so that the patient is the beneficiary. Let's understand the efficacy of supportive psychotherapy. As I mentioned earlier, research in the area of supportive psychotherapy is very sparse. Whatever few studies are there, let's discuss of them. Various meta-analysis supports the efficacy and effectiveness of supportive psychotherapy in the management of depression. A recent network meta-analysis had showed that supportive psychotherapy was good as other form of psychotherapy for the management of depression. That means it is comparable to other psychotherapy. The only exception is that supportive psychotherapy was relatively less efficacious than interpersonal psychotherapy. That means interpersonal psychotherapy scored better than supportive psychotherapy. Supportive psychotherapy has been shown to be less efficacious than cognitive behavioral therapy, but it is better than weightless. But there is a need of systematic studies. We need to do RCTs. We need to come up with a manualized form of supportive psychotherapy. Although there is not a single technique which is used here, multiple techniques are used. Hence, it may be very difficult to structure the supportive psychotherapy. Let's look into how supportive psychotherapy is performed. Let's look into the baseline assessment. First and the foremost, you need to do demographic details, chief complaints, history of presenting illness, onset of symptoms, what are the stressors, hassles, traumatic experience in the past, present, evaluate the coping abilities of the patient, what is his self-esteem, his ego functioning, adaptive skills, before and after the symptoms have started, assess the wish, needs, and the feelings of the patient towards his important peoples in his life. Current and past experience, responses and feelings need to be evaluated. Treatment history, personal history, family history, premorbid personality, mental status examination, cognitive function, diagnosis and case formulation and finally the treatment plan to be done. Setting the goal of psychotherapy together with the patient is very essential during the baseline assessment. The case formulation can be based on psychoanalytical theory, interpersonal theory, object personal or CBT. However, it is important to remember 
that formulation may have to be revised many times based upon the newer information, newer coping skills you have recognized, the weaknesses you have recognized in the patient. Let's look into the goals of supportive psychotherapy. The main goal is to maintain or improve the patient's self-esteem. Please remember that. To minimize or prevent the recurrence of symptoms. That is, to prevent relapse. To maximize the patient's adaptive capacities and coping skills. Knowing when to refer the patient for ECT, for medication or any other biological treatment. Supportive psychotherapy is commonly utilized in many therapeutic encounters that you need to remember. Let's understand the process of supportive psychotherapy. You need to understand there are five different steps of supportive psychotherapy. First and the foremost is you need to accept for supportive psychotherapy. That means the patient is ready to undergo supportive psychotherapy. The first step is making a therapeutic contract. That is to discuss about the payment, the information regarding do's and don'ts, the number of sessions, how long each session last, what is the responsibility of the therapist, what is the responsibility of the patient and the role of client and the therapist need to be discussed. And you need to establish a good therapeutic alliance with the patient because the main ingredient of supportive psychotherapy is good therapeutic alliance. The third important is setting goal for therapy. Setting goal can be short term and long term. The goal of therapy at the beginning should be planned very well. Goal should be mutually agreed between the client and the therapist. Goals need to be based upon client symptoms, problems and priorities. And you need to change the goal as the time goes on. Goals can be set in the initial few sessions only. And finally, where the patient need to go as a long term plan or a goal need to be planned. Therapy situation is another important. You need to understand, don't try to structure the session too much. It should be a semi-structured format. No homework assignment is given. No formal termination is done here. And finally, you need to understand the basic therapeutic stance also play a role. The therapist need to follow a conversational style. Maintain a supportive stance. Hence, it is called as supportive psychotherapy. May use expressive measure without diluting the supportive stance. The therapist need to be active. Be non-judgmental. Unconditional acceptance is very essential. Try to emotionally connect with the client. Identify the client's strength. Avoid argument, criticism, confronting the patient. Avoid questioning. Why? Why didn't you do this? Why you did not do this? Is it the way to do it? Such kind of belittling the patient should be avoided. Do not ask too many questions to the patient. Let the patient give his information in a free floating format. Explain the client that the therapy is not the alternative for pharmacotherapy. It is a combination of medication and psychotherapy plays a very crucial role. Whenever the symptoms worsen, he may be referred for inpatient care also can be discussed. Sometimes you have to say, both the combination of medication and supportive psychotherapy plays a crucial role. Let's understand the practicality of supportive psychotherapy. It can be done either IP basis, that is inpatient basis, outpatient basis, both inpatient and outpatient, on emergency basis, or for consultation like liaison psychiatry, there also can be used. It can be done in medical OPD, medical inpatient. It even can be done online supportive psychotherapy can be done. That means tele-supportive psychotherapy also can be done. There is no fixed time interval, my dear friends. Patient can be seen weekly, weekly twice or thrice, or every week, or even less frequently it can be done. Each session may last from 45 to 60 minutes, my dear friends. 
psychotherapist should be very flexible with regard to frequency of psychotherapy sessions. And even the length of psychotherapy need not be fixed, maybe for 45 minutes or 60 minutes. It can be based upon the patient needs. Supportive psychotherapy can also be combined with other types of therapies like CBT or it may be DBT or ERP can be combined. Please remember, usually supportive psychotherapy is combined with other therapies. Either it can be partly or over a period of time. It can be replaced into a specific structured psychotherapy. Let's understand various techniques used in supportive psychotherapy. The important technique is understanding the patient, giving suggestion, persuasion for change, ventilation, empathizing skills, advice giving, guiding the patient, educating the patient, praising him, limit setting, advice, naming the problem, reassurance, encouraging positive behaviors, validation of the patient's emotion, prescription of medication, especially if he is a psychiatrist, appropriate referral, manipulating the environment if required, expanding the client's awareness with regard to symptoms are the techniques used in supportive psychotherapy. However, I would rather break it into four important cluster of techniques. One is alliance building, which is the key structure in supportive psychotherapy. Esteem building, skill building and enhancing the ego function. Although many supportive psychotherapists do not agree by enhancing the ego function. But however, these are the four important techniques one need to learn. Alliance building is building a good therapeutic relationship with the patient that is expressing interest to solve the problems of the patient, empathizing and understanding the patient problem. Esteem building is enhanced through praise, reassurance, normalizing and encouraging the patient. Skills building and promoting adaptive behaviors are objectives that respond to advice, teaching, modeling, adaptive behavior and respiratory guidance and promoting autonomy is essential. Enhancing ego function can be achieved by reducing and preventing anxiety and expanding awareness. You may reduce the anxiety by teaching meditation or relaxation techniques. Additionally, you one need to remember, anxiety can be reduced through various ways. It can be conversational style, sharing the agenda with the patient, verbal padding, naming the problem, normalizing, rationalizing, modulating the effect, supporting and limit setting. Please remember, expanding the awareness is very essential so that he knows about thoughts, about his feelings and his behavior. Now let's understand. What are the key to success for supportive psychotherapy? The key to success for supportive psychotherapy is establishing and maintaining positive therapeutic alliance. It is very simple but difficult to achieve. Nurture the therapeutic alliance between the therapist, between the therapist and the client. Be yourself. That means the therapist need to be himself need not behave as if he is a god or a person who knows everything. Conducting supportive psychotherapy means being responsive, being real and conversational in the real time. Adapt a simple conversational method. Although transference is neither fostered nor focused in supportive psychotherapy, the resident should told to keep watchful about the transference and prevailing climate in the relationship. You need to watch for that. Enhance the self-esteem of the patient. You need to strengthen the coping skills of the patient. Invariably, transference is not usually handled in supportive psychotherapy. What is the training required for supportive psychotherapy? As I mentioned earlier, in the olden days, there was no need to undergo training. But now, supportive psychotherapy requires accreditation and you need to undergo training at the same time, practice by doing. For that, you need to ingrain certain skills. The simple skills which you need to understand and learn is 
establishing and maintaining therapeutic alliance, making accurate diagnosis and assessment of patients' contemporary problem, establishing treatment goals, interacting in a direct and non-threatening manner to the patient, responding to the patient, giving feedback and giving appropriate advice is essential. Display sensitivity to the patient who is unique individual with his or her family, with socio-cultural background, community structure and is going through a tough time that you need to understand. This is done by STD model that is seeing the supportive psychotherapy done by somebody else, trying to do psychotherapy with the therapist as a co-therapist and finally doing therapy by yourself. So see yourself, try yourself and do it yourself is the important formula you need to understand in supportive psychotherapy. Provide reassurance to reduce symptoms, improve the morale of the patient, adaptation, adaptation and relapse prevention is essential. Recognize, support and promote the patient's ability to achieve the goal that will enhance his well-being. Try to bring in other supportive mechanism either from the patient's family, friends, relatives and from the workplace. Provide various strategies to deal with this problem. What are the attitudes which need to be imbibed when you do supportive psychotherapy? The important attitude is being empathetic, respectful, open, non-judgmental and collaborative. Ultimately, unconditional acceptance what I would like to say able to tolerate ambiguity in patient, being confident and effectively supporting the client is very essential. Sensitive to patient sociocultural and economic issues also be one of the important attitude the supportive psychotherapist need to know. To conclude my dear friends, supportive psychotherapy is an umbrella term for every form of psychotherapy. Technique used in supportive psychotherapy varies from client to client, from session to session, from treatment setting to different treatment setting. There is no straight jacket recommendation technique to do supportive psychotherapy. That means it borrows techniques from various schools. It can be used in any patient starting in any therapy. Supportive psychotherapy can be started. Later it can be shifted to specific structured psychotherapy. The therapist can choose the technique from the various baskets of school of thoughts. Hence, it is considered as eclectic psychotherapy. The, therapy, the therapist utilizes the techniques from various schools so that he can mix and match various techniques to help the client. To my dear friend, one need to understand. The cardinal rule of supportive psychotherapy is do not say everything you know. Only what will help the patient need to be told. In supportive psychotherapy, you are not doing the structured, dynamic, psychodynamic psychotherapy. Hence, you need to say what is supposed to be said. Avoid interpreting the patient's unconscious conflict or trying to restructure his personality to be avoided because in supportive psychotherapy we believe the patient has poor ego strength. Once you are doing supportive psychotherapy and the patient's symptoms are start reducing and he is able to handle the structured, radical, dynamic psychotherapy then you need to switch over to specific structured psychotherapy my dear friend. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.